Hello folks, welcome back to the channel Israel on Foot. I'm your host, Steve, the tour guide. And I hope you enjoyed that glimpse of some of the winter foliage. It's also known as the rainy season here in Israel. And I'm presently standing in a valley that's known as the Valley of the Cross. It's not far from where I live. And it's called that name because of a local tradition that believes that it was from this orchard that the wood was taken to make Jesus's cross for the crucifixion. In last week's episode, we focused on King David's palace in the city of David and concluded the video with the retelling of the story of David and Bathsheba. As this channel aims to follow a certain progression, in other words, to cover the history of the country in the order that it happened, it makes sense to pick up things where we left off last week with David and Bathsheba. Although the fruit of their adulterous relationship, their firstborn child, would die as stillborn, Bathsheba would eventually get pregnant again and carry one of David's children successfully to full term. And that child would not only become one of Israel's most famous kings, he would be remembered as one of the most famous men in the ancient world. Who am I talking about? Well, none other than King Solomon, or Shlomo in Hebrew. Solomon's succession to the throne would not happen without incident. For although God forgave David for his twofold sins of adultery with Bathsheba and the murder of her husband Uriah the Hittite, God still exacted a price from David. For besides their first child being a stillborn, God told David that the sword would never depart from his family from that time on and thenceforth. And the fulfillment of that prophecy almost comes immediately on the heels of his pronouncement. For one of David's sons by the name of Amnon rapes one of his daughters, Tamar. And then after that, another son of David, Absalom, seizes the throne in Jerusalem and in a very public display sleeps with his father's concubines before the watchful eyes of the city's residents. And if that's not enough, another son of David by the name of Adonijah tries to seize power while David is on his deathbed and has yet had the chance to declare his will concerning which of his sons should succeed him as king. This is where Bathsheba, Solomon's mom, re-enters our story. She approaches David on the eve of his passing and says to him, did you not swear that Solomon your son would reign after you? Then why is Adonijah king? Now before that scene, there is no record of David declaring that Solomon was to follow him. And some have suggested that she was exploiting David's dementia by suggesting to him that he did. Nonetheless, whatever intrigue was happening between the lines here, David instructs Nathan the prophet and Zadok the priest to place Solomon on David's own donkey, lead him to the Gihon Spring, and Messiah, or anoint him king over Israel, declaring long live King Solomon. Before David expires, he instructs Solomon, in a way very reminiscent of Don Corleone, to dispose of each of his enemies, which would ultimately include his upstart brother, Adonijah. Shortly after Solomon's reign was established, God appeared to him in a dream by night and said to him, Solomon, ask what I should give to you. And Solomon responded as follows, the nation that you gave me is so great and so numerous that I, who am but a child, could not possibly reign over them. Therefore, Solomon asked God to give him wisdom. Now, when I say wisdom, I'm not referring to what you and I would call book smarts, but rather to a divinely inspired intuition or understanding or perception that doesn't come from the reading of books and the acquisition of secular knowledge. And God was so pleased that Solomon asked for this, instead of riches, long life, and the lives of his enemies, that God granted him his wish, and he gave him that wisdom and all the things that he didn't ask for. Solomon's wisdom would become famous throughout the region, and he would regularly correspond with a neighboring king, King Hiram of Tyre, which is in Lebanon, our neighbor to the north, the two of them would trade riddles with each other, and it's likely that no interpreter was even needed as the two languages, Hebrew and Phoenician, are nearly identical. They are both Canaanite dialects and use the same script and contain a lot of words in common. 
I wanna round off this video talking about Solomon the Builder. Now, while his father David was yet alive, David purchased a plot of real estate from a Canaanite gentleman who dwelled just to the north of the city, who was using the pinnacle of Mount Zion, also known as Mount Moriah, as a threshing floor for his wheat. Now, David, after he purchased that piece of property, we're told wanted to build a temple to Yahweh, his God. But God didn't let him because David had the blood of Uriah the Hittite on his hands. And therefore, it would be his son Solomon who would expand the city northward to the right of that bend in the highway. And he would erect the first temple of the Jews on the pinnacle of the hill, exactly where that golden domed shrine of Islam, the Dome of the Rock, stands today. Now, as it relates to the relationship of the God of the Bible to the kings that he anointed to rule the nation on his behalf, please go and watch episode number two, I've Set My King on Mount Zion. Now, when Solomon died in the year 931 BC, the son that succeeded him to the throne, Rehoboam, you may know him by his English name, Rehoboam, failed to rally the nation behind him, and therefore the nation of Israel was torn asunder or split into two rival kingdoms, Judah to the south, which would continue to be ruled by David's descendants and its capital remaining to be in Jerusalem, and the kingdom of Israel to the north, which would be ruled by competing dynasts and whose capital would be in a town called Samaria. Now, there was a song in which Elton John pleaded, don't let the sun go down on me. Unfortunately, despite all pleas, the sun is going down on me. And therefore, it's with the theme of the split of ancient Israel that I'm gonna split as well and bring this episode to an end, which means it's time to tell you that if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos as I upload them. And lastly, please visit my Patreon page in the links below and consider becoming a monthly patron of this channel. Anyway, this is Steve, the Unemployed Tour Guide, bidding you shalom, and I'll see you next week.